What's up, Watch Flyers? David here. So, which is the best premium co branded credit card? We're not talking about flexible point earning cards like the Chase Sapphire Reserve, City Prestige, or Amex Platinum, but specifically, co-branded premium credit card. In this video, we're gonna break down the differences between the Hilton Aspire, Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant, Delta Reserve Card, and United Club Card. We're gonna go over the annual fee, the sign-up offer, the travel credits offer, the points earning potential, the redemption potential, as well as ongoing benefits to see which is the best premium co-branded credit card for you. First, let's talk about what makes these premium credit cards. Basically, a premium credit card offers a ton of benefits and perks to help you get a lot of value whenever you use these cards throughout the year. But the main characteristic that defines a premium card is the high annual fee. So first let's talk about the annual fee with these cards. Effectively, at the time of filming this video, every annual fee on this card is $450. But for the Delta Reserve card, January 30th of 2020, the annual fee is gonna go up to $550. These annual fees seem really high and they definitely are a lot higher than normal travel credit cards, but they also come with travel credits and benefits and perks to help you not only recoup that annual fee, but to get a lot more value than that annual fee throughout the year. So later on in the video, I'm gonna show you some specific examples of how to recoup that annual fee and get a ton of benefit from these cards. Next, let's talk about the current sign-up offers for each one of these cards. So the Hilton Inspire card is gonna have the highest sign-up offer. It's gonna be $150,000 and Hilton Honors Points after spending $4,000 in three months. Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant Card is going to have a 75,000 point sign up offer after spending $3,000 in three months. With the Delta Reserve Card, you're going to get 10,000 medallion qualifying miles, also known as MQMs, and 40,000 miles after spending $3,000 in three months. Those MQMs are really valuable if you're trying to go for status with Delta. Then we have the United Club Card, which is offering 50,000 miles after spending $3,000 in three months. Next, let's talk about the point earning potential between the four of these cards. Now these are co-branded cards, so the highest multipliers are gonna be for their specific brand. There are some decent multipliers for other categories, but it may not make sense to put your purchases towards these categories, unless you're trying to earn a lot of points with this particular program. Each one of these programs are a transfer partner of either Amex or Chase. I think, personally, I think it's better to put your everyday spending, for example, groceries, dining, stuff like that, towards flexible currencies like with Amex cards, Chase cards, City cards. This way you have an option when it's time to redeem and you could transfer to these partners if you feel like there's a good option to redeem, but to put it all in one program, you may not know how valuable it'll be when it's at the time of redemption. Not only are you limited with options for redeeming, but your miles or points are gonna constantly devalue month after month because these airlines and hotel programs are constantly devaluing their points. With that out of the way, the Hilton Aspire card is gonna earn 14 Hilton Honors points per dollar spent at Hilton Portfolio Properties Worldwide, seven points per dollar on flights booked directly with the airline or at amextravel.com, car rentals booked directly from certain companies, and also seven points per dollar at US restaurants, then it's three points per dollar for every other purchase. Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant is gonna earn six points per dollar at certain Marriott properties, three points per dollar at US restaurants and airfare purchase directly with the airline, then two points per dollar on every other purchase. Delta Reserve Card is gonna earn two United miles per United ticket purchase, then 1.5 miles per dollar spent on all other purchases. So as you noticed, the hotels have much higher multipliers and different categories compared to the airline hotels. Honestly, the Delta card and the United card are a little disappointing that they're only offering two miles per dollar spent on their specific airline. To be fair though, Marriott and Hilton, although offering higher multipliers, higher signup offers, their points are a little diluted and not as valuable as United and Delta. Now that you have an idea of the sign-up offer, the multipliers offered for spending categories, let's go through the points guy point valuation for each of these points. It'll give you a better idea of how much these points are actually worth. So if you just go to Google and type in the points guy points valuation, it does a really good job of pointing out how much each loyalty program is worth. So Hilton Honors is worth 0.6 cents per point. Marriott Bonvoy points are worth 0.8 cents per point. United is worth 1.3 cents per point. And Delta Sky Miles are worth 1.2 cents per point. These point valuations should put things in a little bit more perspective of how valuable these points actually are according to these programs. Next, let's talk about redemption options for each one of these cards. So Hilton Honors points could only be used for Hilton Hotel. Marriott points could be used for Marriott Hotels 
or it could be transferred out to airline partners. Although not the best redemption rate because it's gonna be a three to one ratio for most of those airlines, it rarely makes sense to actually transfer uh, Marriott points over to an airline. With Delta SkyMiles, you could just use it on Delta flights, but also Delta has a few different partners that you could use as well, such as Virgin Atlantic. Same thing with United Miles, just for United Airlines, there's no flexibility there, but you could also use it for Star Alliance partners. Now, the interesting thing with Delta and United is that they have a dynamic system, which means they no longer publish their award charts, so you don't know exactly how much it's gonna cost to fly from uh, between one destination and another. It's kind of up to Delta and United to decide whatever price it's gonna be. Next, let's talk about the travel credits that these cards offer. So these travel credits are gonna help make up that $450 to $550 annual fee. With the Hilton Aspire card, you're gonna get $250 airline incidental fee credit per calendar year, a $250 Hilton Resort credit for each year of the card membership, and then a $100 on-property credit for a two-night Waldorf Astoria or Conrad State. Assuming you're able to use those Hilton credits, that's $550, which will definitely be more than the $450 annual fee. So you're in the green there if you're able to use those credits. Now, I just wanna point out the $350 that Hilton is offering for its credits are a little harder to use compared to the Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant card, which offers $300 in Marriott credit, which is a lot more flexible and can be used towards a Marriott stay. And for the Delta Reserve card and United Club card, they don't offer any travel credits. Next, let's talk about airport lounge access. So if you haven't experienced airport lounge, it's a great thing and all these cards offer lounge access in its own way. Let's start with the Hilton Aspire card. You get Priority Pass Select, which gives you two free guests anytime you use Priority Pass. Same with the Maria Bonvoy Brilliant card, Priority Pass Select, so you get two free guests there. With the Delta Reserve card, you get Sky Club access only when traveling on a Delta coded or Delta operated flight, which means that you can't just go to the airport and go to a Delta Sky Club lounge if you're not flying on a Delta flight. It has to be the same day that you're flying on a Delta flight. And unfortunately, it's $29 per guest, which is a little disappointing. You would think that they would allow you to have one free guest at least. And the United Club offers full United Club membership, which gives two free guests or immediate family could come in for free. Next, let's talk about ongoing benefits. So regardless of the short-term sign-up offer and the annual fee, what really is gonna give you value with these cards are the ongoing benefits. First, let's talk about hotel perks that you get. So with the Hilton Aspire card, you're gonna get one free anniversary award night per year. And if you spend 60,000 on the card, you get an additional anniversary award night weekend night per year. With the Marriott card, you get one anniversary award night, but it's only for hotels valuing 50,000 points or less. The Delta Reserve card offers no hotel perks whatsoever, but the United Club offer luxury hotel and resort collection benefits. Also, the Hilton Aspire card offers diamond status, which is the top tier hotel status. Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant also offers gold status, which is not the highest status, but you can get the platinum status after spending 75,000 in a calendar year. Next, we're gonna talk about travel coverage. So for car rental coverage, the Amex Hilton Aspire card offers secondary protection, Marriott Bonvoy Prilly, secondary protection, Delta Reserve, secondary protection, but the United Club offers primary rental car insurance. So what that means is secondary means that whatever your own personal car insurance is gonna cover, then those three cards are gonna cover what's left over. Compared to the United Club card, you book a rental car with that card, it's gonna cover whatever damage happens to the car. You, know, you don't even need your own personal car insurance. Next is baggage loss or damage. So Hilton Aspire card is gonna cover up to $2,000 for check bags and $3,000 for carry-on bags, with a cap of $3,000 for all Luggage, same thing goes for the Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant card. The Delta Reserve card, surprisingly, only covers $500 for check bags and $1,250 for carry-on bags with a $1,250 cap for all luggage. And the United Club card covers $3,000 per uh, passenger. So it's a little disappointing that the Delta Reserve card doesn't have more coverage for their bags compared to the 
hotel credit cards. Next is baggage delay insurance. So none of the cards offer baggage delay except for the United Club card, which will offer $100 per day for three days. So that's a $300 coverage if your bags are delayed for several days. So let me know if you have any of these premium co-branded cards. If you want to learn more about the Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant card or the Hilton Aspire card, you could click this link over here or this one down here, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey. <laughs>